I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are going to be painting from Resident Evil 2, the board game. Oh, oh there we go. The moon has popped it up on the screen for us. Cool. Hooray. Horses are just... Yeah. So they're kind of like... Um, what's the horse from They'd be like... Tangled. Sin- this is looking, me looking directly but when I turn my head. There we go. How's that? Does that work? But... <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for joining us once again on Painting Happy Little Minis. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, thank you once more for joining us on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are going to cover base coating. We are. We are. Yeah. Um, so for the last uh, year and a half, almost, mm-hmm. almost a year and a half, I've been uh, writing painting articles for Game Trade Magazine, which we have the latest da, copy. Da, da, da. So this is the October issue. <laughs> uh, the first year, they were uh, articles that covered mm-hmm. different colors. So there was uh, how to paint red, how to paint green, how to paint gold, how to paint like dirty silver, how to do rust, that kind of how thing. How to paint with all the colors of the wind. All the colors of the wind. The wind? <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this, uh, the second year, sort of season two, mm-hmm. uh, I'm kind of uh, doing, going back to the beginning, uh, some of the recent articles have been about assembling miniatures, um, cleaning up your miniatures, preparing them, uh, priming them. We did uh, a section on priming. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, you three weeks I mean? ago, four weeks oh. ago, something like that. A time ago. You can check back in the... In the... In the uh, Go binge watch every single <laughs> watch episode every single of episode. Painting Happy Little Minis. And you will find it. <laughs> uh, but... Today, yeah, we're going to, um, that, was, that was one where we sort of threw the priming in with the other models that we were painting. Yeah. This one we're just going to uh, focus on base coating. Uh, and in the article, mm-hmm. I've base coated a whole bunch of Lannister, uh, Lannister Guardsmen from A Song of Ice and Fire by Come On. And so I figured for that, I'll get that out of the way, that we should therefore um, try our base coating skills on, again, right. even more Lannister Guardsmen. So we have um, four in black, four in white, two that have been primed in red with an army painter uh, red spray. Uh, but yeah, so we'll just get in there, we'll do some painting um, of base coats and try and cover, I think, as I said before, there are three, three sort of key important things that I wanted to point yes. out. So uh, we'll go through and work on those. The first one is with base coating, um, smooth layers, smooth coats um, are important. They're the first ones you're putting down on the, mm-hmm. the model. You don't want to build up a whole bunch of sort of blobby layered. Um, I was just going to dunk and gritty. go. Gritty. Dunk and go. Some, <laughs> sometimes that will give you a smooth coat. It'll be a really <laughs> thick, smooth coat. But uh, yeah, smooth coats being uh, important for base coats. Uh, neatness being the next one. Good luck to both of us on that. <laughs> yes. If you haven't noticed, Dave is missing his glasses today. <laughs> I could sit here like this, but then I couldn't paint. But I, yes, missing my glasses, uh, so it's going to be that's kind a, of... I have arthritis hands, you have no glasses. Yep, I have... With uh, our powers combined. My opia, <laughs> with our powers combined. <laughs> We're an old person. We that's are okay. a very old person. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go with the neatness, but neatness is a very important thing for um, the base coating stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the final one is, the reason I've got uh, a bunch of uh, models primed black is, actually I'm going to throw them up on the spinner here so that we can, the owner is favoring the spinner, you can tell. There we go. Right, <laughs> oh, one of each color, perfect. Okay, so, uh, one of the things that I'm going to show is that uh, sometimes painting over a, a black base coat mm-hmm. or a darker base coat 
um, can help if your colors are, um, if you're ready to, to paint, or you have col colors that have good coverage over uh, a darker, okay. a darker base coat. Because um, one of the things that can happen, so when you're, when you're painting, you've got two colors that come together, mm -hmm. and typically there's some sort of dividing line between them, a little, tiny little crevice. Uh, and if you've got a white primed model, um, sometimes that white can show out from between those two, where those two colors come together. But if it is um, primed black, we black that comes out, but it's in shadow anyway. So it all looks like you've painted everything. It looks like you've painted everything, and it looks like you've done everything neatly and, and that kind of thing. So black can be super helpful to have in those. The shadows mm. black or dark brown or dark blue, depending on, on what it is. But yeah, so I figured we'd jump in and mess around. Let's do it. Does that sound good? And Excellent. Inktober is still going strong, mm, yeah. and today is pattern. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So okay. we might have to, at the tail end there, do a speed pattern paint. Speed pattern paint? Yeah, speed say that pattern. a bunch. Speed paint pattern? <laughs> speed pattern paint? <laughs> pattern speed paint? Um, hey to everyone in the chat. Hey Byron, Sarah, Keith, Mike, Michael. Um, over on the YouTube. Gary. Uh, over on the YouTubes. And uh, RuneStorm over there as well. Yep, yep. Okay. We are. So what's the easiest way to make sure rule one of basing that we are going to get those nice thin even coats? Smooth coats. Yep. Uh, basically um, using a palette, mm -hmm. super important. So not painting directly from the paint pot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's obviously Painting with um, Vallejo paints or Army Painter paints is very difficult to paint from the paint pot, mm -hmm. but uh, with Citadel it's it's very easy. So, not painting from the paint pot, but painting from a palette, so you can control the consistency of the the paint. Um, I have one of the Lannister Guardsmen here in, um, in a white prime. So what I'm going to do is rather than just going straight for the red. Because um, I want to use it later on, maybe in another episode we, when we cover layering, <laughs> <laughs> we can come back and uh, paint the the strong the highlight on there. Uh, but because it's uh, white, it'll uh, have a good sort of um, vibrance vibrancy, I guess, behind it um, when we paint on the red. So I'm just adding a little bit of this uh, burnt red to the red here. So I can get a nice kind of mid-tone. I can start painting that on. And hopefully, I'll do a fairly good job of, of being neat in certain areas. A lot of people uh, sometimes ask me about what order to paint a miniature in. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I might have mentioned this before. There are some folks who enjoy, who, who really like painting a miniature from the, the inside out. So they might, they'll paint the eyes first, and then they'll paint the skin, mm -hmm. and then they'll paint the first layer of clothing, and then the second layer, the third layer, um, all the way out to the sort of weapons and equipment. But uh, sometimes that, that seems really odd to me. Particularly when you see their first, the first stage, which is the painted <laughs> eyes, just on a primed black or a primed white miniature. I was like, what's going on there? I think they like that because uh, they've already painted in the soul of the, of the model. It reminds me a lot of people who do, uh, who don't really follow the whole like base sketching thing uh, whenever you're doing okay. quick draws or something. And usually, uh, the easiest way most people end up sketching is, you know, you get the base of the body down first. So you're not really worried about any of the details. You're just circle for the head and like a, maybe a line going through the middle, showing, casing the movement, that kind of stuff. And then you put the, the blobs of where the body's supposed to be and you kind of build up and build up and build up. But it's always interesting to see certain people who sketch um, where all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's a hand here and there's, you know, maybe an ear here and somehow they're going to create a actual picture out of it, right. kind of backwards okay. or 
they they start with uh, where you wouldn't expect, and you don't really understand what picture until all of a sudden, boom, right. there it is. Yep. Well, that's an that's an interesting uh, thing. Actually, as you're as you're talking about it, it reminds me of when I used to I uh, used to draw um, like my D and D characters. Mm -hmm. I usually play dwarves, so when I draw them, I'd start with the most the second most prominent feature on a dwarf, which is their nose. <laughs> it's going to be their beard. So, but, but it'll be the yeah. sort of the, the brows and the nose first, mm -hmm. and then build out from there. So I didn't draw a circle and then put the nose in the middle, or an oval or whatever. It was just start with the nose and see where it went. I, I like that. I like that. That's good life advice. Start it, with the nose, see the, where it goes. See where it goes. It even <laughs> rhymes. It was That's how you know it's true life advice. <laughs> Only true life advice rhymes. Um, <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> I wish I'd had thought of Michael that. Michael Harris says, do the acrylic paint pens work on miniatures? Which I imagine they oh. would because it's acrylic. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, I, I mean, really, to, to answer that one, the, there's a lot of things that you can use to apply mm -hmm. paints and pigments and that sort of thing to miniatures. It's a matter of how well will they work. That's true. Um, That's there true. are quite a few um, models. There are a lot of larger models from uh, Games Workshop, for example, that have uh, a lot of sort of detailed trim much like this around the edges of the armor plates. But they're generally, they're fairly flat with the little rivets here and there. So I've seen people use um, like uh, silver pens or the, the silver, that. not the, not sort of the, not the Sharpie style ones. But yeah, the, but I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, the ones that are closer to leaf. Um, yep. Emerald Dragon Games says, hello Dave, need to send you another mini. Same address, right? Yeah. Yep, definitely that would be fantastic. I look forward to that. Um, and then Chuck says, question. When you're painting, do you typically move from darker colors to light or vice versa, or does it really matter? Uh, I think that's a choice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, a, definitely a personal choice. Doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think as you, as you paint lots and lots of minis, you'll develop a a style or an approach that you like. Um, I tend to paint, uh, my approach tends to be paint the largest areas first or the, the areas that might be the messiest. That's why I did the face first because I knew with all that tiny little detail that I'd get that on his collar. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> that I can cover up. I tend to paint either the largest spaces first or the lighter colors because I know it's easier for me to cover up light colors with right. darker colors than it is for me to necessarily get dark blue everywhere and then yeah. suddenly have to go back in with skin tone. <laughs> no, exactly. You're, you're right there, definitely. So, yeah, in this, in this case, the um, using a red, which has, um, typically doesn't have a very strong pig, well, doesn't have a lot of pigment, <laughs> typically. typically. Uh, it, it's more difficult to correct with red than it is to correct with like black or brown or blue or that kind of thing. So yeah, over a white base coat, I'd typically paint those colors, uh, the lighter colors are reds and yellows and, and so on first. And this one, his, um, I'm gonna paint the trim around his uh, tunic uh, yellow. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm not painting that first is that I can paint the, uh, paint his tunic in faster and paint the red in faster. I'm pretty sure that I would splash the red back onto the yellow. <laughs> so I just want to do that that yellow once. Um, let's see. Jason James says, I picked up a paintbrush for the first time in about, uh, first time about four months ago. My artistic life was martial arts and acting. I honestly feel like a five-year-old and wonder of how you guys paint so well. I feel like I paint like a clubbed seal. I mean, it, t it takes a while. I've been doing this yep. for about a year with minis specifically. Yeah. Um, and I definitely don't feel like I have mastered anything whatsoever <laughs> with minis. Um, 
I, I still feel much more comfortable if you were to be like, hey, Gretchen, have some charcoal. <laughs> right. Like, go, go forth and conquer. And I'd be like, okay, this is so much easier. Maybe we um, should do that one episode. Just we, should, we should do like a, um, like mess around with charcoals because I've, I've never messed around with. You've well, never, never messed around with well, charcoals? Well, it's been a long, a long time since charcoals. Like. Or watercolor. That's my other, my other passion. We'll have a have a swap episode where I, yeah. I show you how to paint. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. What do you think? think we could be, be painting happy little D and D characters. Yeah, that'd be we'll great. Do a, we'll do a like a, a for funsies episode, I can, I can and we can give away the, the painting. I can pay, go back to painting dwarves and see if there's any muscle memory <laughs> left for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Yeah, uh, yeah I can definitely definitely understand that. It's uh, practice. You're right. Practice is the key. Thing. It's, um, it's just different and not being afraid to experiment like there's been quite a few minis that I've painted where I don't necessarily dislike how they've come out but I also know if I would have stuck to the base skills I already know they probably would have looked neater but then I wouldn't have gotten the chance to explore other techniques and discover right. things yeah um, like that, uh, coat. Rainbow coat. yeah yeah like the yeah. rainbow coat Pop this guy up. Or even um, painting the the rainbow fish dragon. Like that, most of that was all just experimental uh, with the contrast paints. Because I was like, oh, these are more liquid, kind of similar to watercolor. I wonder how much of the techniques would cross over. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, one of the other things that I'd, I'd suggest is it's not just practice, but it's also... Make sure you're paying attention to how things, uh, how you're doing things, how you're applying things, what the results are when you push really hard, or what the results are when your brush isn't as pointed as you'd like it to be, that kind of thing. So you can learn. One um, day you'll get me to lick a paintbrush. Maybe. But it's just not that day. Let's see. Okay, today is not that day. Right here. <laughs> no. uh, so I'll I've have drank to paint water before. I didn't recommend that. Yeah, because I used to keep my watercolors. Um, I would have a cup of coffee, right. and then I'd have a cup of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. On my on my desk, I have them in two separate places. One, my paint water's over here, and my drinking, my my beverage. Nope, and I would use mugs <laughs> for both. <laughs> right. No, mine mine are quite different. Right. One, it could be a can, it could be a coffee cup, could be whatever the beverage is in, and the other one is a mason jar. So, creature of habit. I'm saying I very rarely drink from a mason jar. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. Oh wow, oh. a lot of y'all have come in. Oh. Awesome. Hey, hey guys. Hey Pete. Hey Cat. Hey Bubble Guts. On Twitch, Bubble Guts. What an awesome. Handle. That's a good one. Very cool. And Steve. Excellent. <laughs> Mini Painting Studio says, Dave is like an ancient dragon full of wisdom. <laughs> full of wisdom and gas. Uh, I don't know. Possibly, I, I, I'm feeling a bit ancient now. Like, really? My, with my eyes oh, with your going eye. completely. Dave, what do your eyes see? Um, <laughs> Mike's a, very, a very blurry, <laughs> very blurry model. Um, Mike Becker says, Dave, are you going to paint more Free Guild with the book that was released? Oh, uh, the, oh, you're talking about the cities, oh, who was it? The Cities of Sigma release for Games Workshop. Um, Mike, the answer to that is probably no. Um, what? what? Well, geez, all right then. I know, I know. The, um, the reason Mike asked that is that for a long time, uh, actually, why don't, just before I launch into this story, I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to grab um, this red primed model so that I can work on a different section and uh, show you how I'd go through and do that. So you can watch along while I'm talking about the Empire. Not the Star Wars Empire. So how's the, the Empire going these days? <laughs> it's not that one. Not that one. But it's uh, the, the Empire from... Uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles, uh, which was the game prior to Age of Sigma, Warhammer Age of Sigma, and the um, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I used to play Empire, 
and pretty much every year I'd paint up an Empire Army. Maybe 100 models, 150 models, something like that. But a different theme and different um, approach. And it helped me realize that one of the things that I love about wargaming is playing. Wow, I felt really old because I've got the, I've got the lean back and the. <laughs> Man, I wish I brought my glasses. Uh, so I love about wargaming is playing um, sort of humanity against the fantastic, mm-hmm. where um, humans are are as we are with all our strengths and flaws. And uh, generally where the fantastic stuff, the dragons, the orcs, the um, elves, mm-hmm. all sorts of other beasties as well, uh, are um, usually stronger, yeah. more adept, more specialized, more focused on some particular way of sort of ending humanity. Um, so I always enjoyed games where you can bring together a whole bunch of humanity to sort of band together and work together to fight off those threats. In Age of Sigma, that's not really so much a thing anymore because humanity is primarily sort of protected by this uh, the Stormcast Eternals, mm-hmm. who are themselves fantastic. <laughs> They're super strong, super elite kind of thing. Um, so instead, uh, what Mike's asking about is the Cities of Sigma book, which has humanity and has elves and has dwarves and that kind of thing, who all work together. But it's not really just humanity. They're working together with with other fantastical creatures. So instead, I'm just going to ignore that and probably start to build a Karadron Overlord's army who are kind of like steampunk dwarves. You really like the dwarves today. That's like the theme. I know. It's like I'm feeling a bit short today as well as what we're talking about, <laughs> really. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Byron Gretchen should make a coloring book. I could make a coloring book. That'd be cool. You should um, totally do that. See, Clive says, what benefit do you get from priming in red, Dave? Uh, the, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna reach out. Yep, there we go. Um, for um, the, these models, because the, uh, the Lannisters are primarily uh, red, uh, they've got a lot of red on the there, the red uniforms. Um, priming them red means that your base coat is already done, mm. and you can go, and you can go your your, pri- your main base coat is already done. So you can go straight into uh, working on the other areas like the yellow, so the trim that I just painted on around there, and the lion on his chest, and and kind of fairly quickly, I can jump into painting with um, with black. And when we were talking before about what colors, or what orders, mm-hmm. pardon me, do people um, paint their models in? Usually I save the metallics to the end mm-hmm. so that once I've painted all of the, the things like the, um, the bright reds, the bright yellows, and so on, I can come back and do those corrections with, um, with black paint. And black paint is in my opinion, the best um, for painting underneath metals. Oh. You're fine. Mm-hmm. So. Leona's saving the day. Yay. Sorry, because I'm uh, not half blind. It's not really that. Because <laughs> everything's just a little bit fuzzy. Um. Cat, do the pics look slightly out of focus to anyone else? Hopefully not anymore, other than Dave. Uh, Still looks out of focus to me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I haven't been posting much lately, got into Kings of War, and I've been batch painting hordes of minis. Sounds like a good excuse. Yep. Um, Kings of War, I'm trying to remember, are they 
I think it's coming up soon as uh, third edition, Kings of War. So uh, from Mantic. So they're getting ready. Who's um, who's doing that? Mike G. Excellent. Getting ready for the release of third edition. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Dwarves are well loved within the chat. Excellent. As they should be. <laughs> and everyone else is also blind. So right. you are in the good, Dave. Hooray. Um, one of us, one of us. Mike Becker says, my Empire Army is my 30 year army passion project. 30 years. Oh my goodness. What? That's a lot. That's older than me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so young. You're not that old, Dave. That's true. I'm not. Just feel like it when I'm thinking back like this. Don't worry. Hmm? Oh, man. Oh, no. Goodbye, bubble guts. Bye bye. Come uh, back and see us soon. I only feel old when my arthritis kicks in. And then right. I'm like, I have the hands of an 80 year old. No. <laughs> There we go. Which I haven't yet found a magical cure for painting minis whenever your hands just don't want to bend. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know that there is one. I just keep dabbing on the paint. Like eventually it'll go where it's supposed to. Apart from like cortisone shots, I think. That, that's a hit or miss. So my arthritis isn't that bad. Um, right. It's, and part of it is because I tore everything in my thumb. Oh, okay. So this thumb doesn't always bend like it's supposed to, like the dexterity, and it's just not there. Right. Um, but uh, cortisone shots, if you use them too much, they'll actually degrade the joint. Right, I have yeah. heard of that, yeah. So I'm, I'm not at the point where I feel like that's a valid option yet. I'm like, well, okay. we'll keep joint function for as long as possible. Sure, that makes sense. I was told to just keep moving. Like, as long as I keep moving, it's good. Right, okay. <laughs> It's only when you like die that it's not good, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's it's fine. Um, I get arthritis in my feet a lot more than I do in my hands. Like my hands will get like kind of stiff, but they won't actively be painful. It'll just be like, oh, you can, oh, you can. Okay. Whereas like my feet will actually hurt, and I'll be like, oh, I need mm -hmm. to take a, I need to take a sit. <laughs> right. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Let's see. Ooh, someone says Gretchen Biofreeze is your friend. Oh. Have you used that? No. I'm gonna gunna though. Okay. Check it out. Someone had a question about brushes. Okay. Brushes. Let's see. What style size of brush do you prefer and why? And about how long do your brushes last? Right. Um, I am a firm believer that brushes last forever. Their purposes just change. Right. I will use a brush until I physically cannot, until like they will fall apart as I'm using them and I will ruin an art piece because I just can't. Can't give up the brush? <laughs> give up the brush. <laughs> I will run that brush into the ground before I admit that it is no longer worthy of painting. What about you? <laughs> um, well, I, I was just thinking that after that, you could like whittle them down, whittle the brush handles down into toothpicks. Oh, see, and continue to get and, useful. Yeah. Them. Yep. That's uh, <laughs> fine. I like. Uh, I, I typically use uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes. Uh, in this case, I have a Winsor and Newton Series Seven, um, and this one is a size two. Uh, it's pretty, like size two for Winsor & Newton is, is quite large compared to some other brushes. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Broken Toad series, uh, sorry, Mark II. Um, this is a size two, and I'll compare that to the size two of the, and check out the difference there. Crazy different. Um, I would normally not mention that Broken Toad, the to Broken Toad brushes, because about 12 months ago, mm -hmm. Chris said that he couldn't, he wasn't able to find a source for the, the hair that he wanted to use Ooh. that was going to be good enough quality and ethically sourced. So um, he stopped making brushes. 
But he has now found. Hmm? I said, no. No. I know. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I think I bought the, the last um, three that were in the US. <laughs> but um, the, uh, he has found a source, uh, an ethical source for the hair that he likes to use. Uh, and so we'll be making the Broken Toad Mark III brushes. I'm not sure when they'll be available. I know that just recently he put, he put up a, like a pre-order thing for sets of them and they sold out like in an hour. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. I am not that particularly picky. I just go into Michael's and I touch all of the brushes <laughs> that are there. Like I, I will spend a good 10 minutes just, mm-mm. Not the right kind of. I did it with paper too, though. Right. Like yep. it has to be the right, the right kind. <laughs> sure. sure. I can see that. Um, That's all good. Ooh, Clive, Gretchen needs heat pads to warm your hands through. That is literally what I did whenever I used to work as a stable hand. Is I would just have pockets because in the winter, like you're with the, the cold, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even grip. Right. So yep. I just have a bunch of heat pads just like shoved in. Um. Jason, uh, you had terrifying things done to your hands. I had them threaten to fuse bones in my feet, but thankfully I was like, no, <laughs> not yet. Right. I am, I, I will wear myself out like my paintbrushes right, yeah. <laughs> first <laughs> before I fuse my feet bones because I do too many things that involve my feet bones. Right. I need those unfused. Yes. They're like, it won't affect you much. And I was like, eh, I think that will actually affect my body mechanics when it comes down to yeah. martial arts and other things. Chances are. As a matter of fact. Yep. But uh, I think it was their second, their second part of the question was how long they last. Was that it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the Kalinsky Sables, um, for me, they last about, um, they last in a, a really good form with the ability to get a nice fine point on them and a good sort of snap in the brush uh, for about six months. Wow. Which is about, for me, is about, good. is about 200 miniatures. Yeah. So if you're painting at a rate of 200 miniatures a year, they should last you a year. If you're painting at a rate of 50 miniatures a year, because Even I wear <laughs> my brushes down so much, I've never actually tracked how long they last. Right. Yep. I just repurpose, repurpose. Oh, this is now for dry brushing. Oh, this is now specifically for flicking <laughs> paint. Ooh, this one is like gl too glumpy because I've left it out for three days and forgot it existed, so the paint glued on. That's now for the rubber <coughs> stuff that I use to cover. Uh, All right bits of paintings I don't want to paint, so okay. that's good. The rubber right. cement, yeah. Oh, the, um, like for masking. Yeah, masking, like masking rubber, fluid. that's masking what fluid. it is. Yep. That's what I'm, the, the word I'm looking for, good job. I knew it was there. Yeah. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh-huh. Cool. Everyone has such good arthritis care tactics. Y'all yeah. are ready, y'all are like, <laughs> we've lived through this, Gretchen, here you go. Um, but I, of course, I like Kat's sort of caveat. Not a cure. Not a cure not, there's the way, so not many a cure. people that would, though, that'd be like, oh, you just need to, like, inject yourself with turmeric and it'll solve all your problems. Like, no. Oh, no, they're not wrong. <laughs> just kidding. Paprika is way better. You can. Paprika is way better. Yeah. I like paprika. Paprika's no. good. But anyway. Like paprika and uh, <laughs> potatoes. Right. To change the subject entirely. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so. So yeah, they're, they're, they're my thoughts on brushes. Yeah. I'm trying to get right. this. So what's your advice for paint that is not opaque, like I am running into here, where I'm doing a bunch of million little tiny Tiny layers of red. Layers of red, trying to keep it as smooth as possible. Okay. While also having it not particularly cover the most opaque. So, the fun thing about um, red paint mm -hmm. and yellow paint is that typically most of them don't have a lot of pigment in them. 
they can have fairly bright, vibrant pigment, but there's just not as much, or it's a little bit more translucent so than I've, pigments in so other, learning. other paints. So one of the things that I did earlier was um, when I was painting, I was still painting over white, but um, mixed in some of the, the darker red with the, hmm. the brighter red. The darker red is, um, is also more sort of desaturated. So it has a bit more gray in there and gray is a stronger pigment well, as, as far as opacity goes. Yeah. So there are other colors or other paints that you can mix into your um, reds that will help give you that um, a good coverage mm -hmm. with a, only a, one or two coats rather than multiple coats so like you're working I through I take there. Dungeon Stone maybe. Uh, I'd probably instead. No? I'd, Ooh, what would you choose? Rather than saying use gray, mm -hmm. rather than meaning use gray, um, go with something that has some gray in it. So something like, um, if you look at a brown, might be a brown. Say there is Owlbear Brown. Let's look at that one. And there's this red as well, cobalt red. Cobalt, cobalt red. red. Yep. I am actually, I'm going to... Uh, learn us a thing, Dave. I'm going to learn you a thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little um, house painting trick. Mm -hmm. If you want to paint red on the walls, uh -huh. if you just get a red paint, red house paint, it can go on not smooth because it, it'll have the same kind of problem. Uh, it, it'll go, it, without a primer. You, you can put it on smooth, yeah. but you, you'll be... You'll paint a lot of layers. Yeah. So if you're a first time homeowner and you go to uh, Home Depot and you say, I want to get this red paint and they say, well, I recommend you mm -hmm. get the paint and primer in one. It's only like $10 more. And you say, sounds like it. I'm going to try to <laughs> get an extra $10 out of I feel of like me. I'm learning life advice here. <laughs> Believe them. Ah, okay. So instead of taking eight layers to paint your dining room, it would only or take two or three. So, um, yes, that's, that is a life advice thing. <laughs> and now we know. Now you know. And now exactly. it's half the battle. So exactly. whether you are painting... And lasers at the other half, right? <laughs> whether you're painting a Lannister or your dining room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so what you could do, sometimes as well, um, you'll, you'll hit on a particular recipe mm -hmm. of two paints where individually, mm -hmm. neither of them has a very good sort of opacity. Mm -hmm. They're both fairly translucent. But when you mix them together, the opacity is like exponentially higher. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. But uh, what I've generally found is bones and tans mm -hmm. have enough opacity that when they, when they work with reds, it gives you a good, good sort of coverage. So... Oh, sorry, colors. So what was your original color? So the original color um, I did was, I had no luck with the crimson, so I moved over to glistening blood. Okay. Uh, which is very glistening, I will give it that. But I was like, that's something we could change after a base coat. So yep. we'll right, glisten. Actually. <laughs> yeah, just need a couple here. I'm actually, what am I actually gonna suggest? So, uh, I'm going back and forth. <laughs> It's rather, I was going to suggest going with a skeleton bone, uh -huh. mixing it. it'll give you a bit of a pinky sort of mm. color, but I'm actually going to recommend Minotaur hide there. So I think, like let's, ex let's experiment and let's experiment. Let's mix do those that. together and uh, see how we go for, for that creative sort of opacity there. The other one that I was going back and forth on is, um, oh, that's cool, no worries, was Ruddy Skin. This one, oh, Ew. there we go. Basically, I'm just going to move it all around the set until Leona can't track it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that was just the other one catch I was going to suggest. Catch it, Leona, catch it. <laughs> um. But, uh, yeah, so I'd probably mix it in a little bit sort of more heartily, maybe a 50-50 mix. Okay, okay, here we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> It's an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an experiment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because I left my talking tongue at home as well. <laughs> I was sitting there right next All to right, my glasses. All right, so let's see how well this... And I mean, that's something I think that gets looked over in painting a lot is the actual, like, the chemical makeup of 
the paints and how pigments interact with each other. Yeah. Because I know quite a bit about, like I said, I could do watercolors, I could tell you about that, but I don't typically use acrylics enough to, to really know other than to be like, I can probably do color theory. Yeah. I can mix you a thing. Uh, exactly. There's a lot of a lot of the color theory stuff. Obviously, is mm -hmm. works the same, um, but it's it's the it all comes down to the specific paints that you use um, that you're using. So, a red from um, the army painter might be different to a red from, um, or it might be a different sort of chemical makeup of um, the same. Uh, red with the same sort of brightness or the same saturation. Mm. Um, so they're going to react differently when you mix them with the same things. So a lot of it is kind of experimenting and when I mentioned before about paying attention, that's kind of the thing to... Jot this down. Learn. Yeah. There will be a test at the end of class. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we did that at the end of an episode? Just like... That'd be crazy. Absolutely crazy. We should totally do it. That would be hilarious. Great idea. Great idea. So, yeah, um, paying attention means that that you'll know, you remember. Okay, I tried this, this mix and this, or oh, these two colors to mix a base, and it didn't work to cover black. Then you might try it over white, and it'll be absolutely fine, or it might cover well over gray. And a lot of it's um, the thing about feeling more comfortable with your painting is is just paying attention to what you're doing. And this actually keep track of uh, it. Let's see if I where I am here up mm -hmm. on there. So you can see already, even this this you can't tell over the camera, but where it's uh, when it shines, you can kind of see the red shine on it on the lower part of his tunic. What? Yep. Yeah, sure. There we go. Um, cool. On the lower part of his tunic, there you can see. So uh, around here. Yeah. Oh, that's not that's the... wrong cam. Wrong close cam. <laughs> there we go. Um, so you can see in the shine that there is red there on the lower part of that tunic. Yeah. Um, and not on camera, we can see that there's red there. Yeah. Um, but it absolutely does not even show up on camera. That's how weak the red is um, covering that black. But even with a little bit of brown, um, to do as Dave said and just draw out that pigmentation, Yeah. the, the entire back is now com pretty much opaque. Yep. So if you, can, um, if you can find a mix like that, something that works for you for that base coat, mm -hmm. um, painting over black, for these guys, as they go going. Well, thankfully, my, my dropping of the miniature wasn't on camera. Um, but you can see how I've just gone through and painted all of these these sections black as um, ready to be um, either black leather or a base coat for brown or for um, silvers and golds. There's a lot of that on there anyway. Mm -hmm. So starting with a black miniature, painting on the red, um, into those those areas and then painting the, the trim is, means you don't have to go back and paint the black. So there's a kind of a, a shortcut for each of them, um, which is why you might choose to prime your models different colors. Um, we can go back and look at this guy. Oh, okay. You can see the red isn't, isn't quite as bright. That's because I mixed in the, the burnt red to it. But later on I can come back and highlight this Whereas for the primed red, I'd probably These shade it. These people in the chat talking about brush care. <gasps> brush Responsible care. Responsible artists. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> um, I find if you don't have any actual fancy paint, uh, like brush care paints, Dawn dish soap, really. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that works yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe next I week. Say, I destroy. Maybe all next of week I'll bring in brushes. some um, some brush soap. Ah. Not no, not for you. To, not for you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to force anything on you here. It's up to completely up to you how you want to. I 
deal with it. I should find some of my worst paintbrushes <laughs> at home and bring them in for the horror of it all. Actually, and, you should. That'd be cool. Um, and be like, no, no, I use it for watercolor. It's fine. It's yeah. not. It's you not. You should many. definitely do that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, cat's heading out. Gonna go yeah. check on the lad. See you next heading Thursday, out. cat. Bye. Oh, <laughs> she said to leave, but we're getting a master's class in pigment. <laughs> that was not a master class. That was a yep. that was a 101, <laughs> but that's cool. Cool. I, feel, I definitely feel like pigment, how pigments interact with each other isn't normally uh, considered up there with the skills. It's a, it's a different thing. It's a, well, there's, there's a lot of techniques mm -hmm. that you can learn about. There's um, different approaches to how you apply paint with the brush. But if you know the the underlying science behind why it works, yeah, then when it doesn't work, you can you can make. change things up. You know what to do. You know what else to try. Yep. Um, it's or, the same in baking too. Or even too. that you know you should try something else, because if you you might just go, oh, I'm no good at it. And it's got nothing to do with how good at it you are. We actually, I was uh, giving lessons with watercolor once, and yeah. the person I was giving lessons to had a different kind of paper than I did. All right, okay. Um, and she was very frustrated that I was getting certain techniques to show up a certain way, and when she mimicked the techniques, they didn't show up the exact same way. Right. And okay. it was all down to just the paper. Her paper, her watercolor paper wasn't uh, responding, but her technique was perfect. Right, okay. Yep, I think that's pretty much it. With miniature painting, usually it's the like the, the thing you're painting on doesn't change too much, but uh, it could be it might be the the priming that you've done, mm -hmm. the thickness of the primer coat, or the um, sometimes if you prime in high humidity, you'll get uh, it'll be a little bit fuzzy. That's which will give you a very different result. Really interesting. Yeah, so even though it's the same miniature. The prime uh, they use. Gonna go paint myself a fuzzy. Nah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna paint a miniature, it's and I'm gonna. Frustrating, really. I'm gonna paint it, breaking all of the rules for painting. Oh, okay, ready. I'm gonna do that. I don't know what I'm gonna paint yet, but I'll. That seems like a fun day. Okay, well, one of the ones, one of the ways you could do it, is. Mm -hmm. um, with your can of primer, put it outside when it's like close to freezing. That's and then fun. then use it and prime it. Yeah, I've Maybe done little. that with a. If you if you set out a, a painting, um, it'll okay. freeze before it dries, and it creates interesting textures. And okay. sometimes it's fun, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> not so much fun. Well, because you can't control it at all. So it's like if this texture does the exact thing I want it to do. This painting will look amazing. Um, and then it's like, I want to make ice crystals this way, to the left, instead of where you want it all with them. Right. Uh, I see. Say lovey, it happens. Um, Jason says, by the way, thank you to all of you. This page has been the best find of my short painting career. You guys have helped me immensely. I'm glad. Excellent. That is good. We are here, we are here to help. I think we're at... Uh, we're over 1,430 people now. Ooh, so we're gonna get back up to like... We're gonna get over that 1,500 yeah. pretty soon. That'll be fun. And we'll do a special giveaway. A very special giveaway for that one. It will be cool. And we're also coming up on my two year anniversary <gasps> on the show. I already had my one year anniversary on the show. Yep. yep. Was that last week? Week before? Something like that. What? I kept quiet. Facebook reminded me. Oh. Facebook was like, hey, you started working at Game Trade Media. Surprise. And it's like, oh, that's cute. You should have done something special. Nah. Y'all are special enough. That's true. We should have done true. something <laughs> special. <laughs> Now, thankfully, the lion on this, this surcoat is raised, so that even though I can't quite, quite see the edges as clearly as I'd like, 
Maybe I should paint through. That's a, oh, that's how I can do it. If I use the close cam. No, it's not going to. No, it's, it's there's serious lack of depth perception in the uh, using that close cam. So I'm just going to have to hope that it works. There we go. Cool. All right. So that actually ended up working out so much better. Yeah. Excellent. What you can do there is you can let that dry for a little bit. I and, mean, I have to have patience. And come back with um, with maybe a brighter red. Yeah. For that final coat. Um, but at the same time, looking at this, so you know, put it on here, steal it. Uh, because you were using thin layers, mm -hmm. or sm like basically thin, smooth painting, it's not everything's still smooth. Right? Yeah. Everything's still just how you want it. Yeah, that looks great. Very cool. Nice one. Patience. Hooray! So, should we take a look at some minis? Yeah. From the group? Some... Let's do it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, because it's further away, I can read that Gary has said, You're doing good, Dave. <laughs> so, I assume that's. Byron wants to know where these minis are from. They're from Song of Ice and Fire by Come On, right? Yep. Yeah. So, Come On uh, Games. So, Song of Ice and Fire is the game. These ones are from the starter set. They're um, Lannisters. Lannister Guardsmen, I think. But I'm never going to build an army of Lannisters, filthy Lannisters. <laughs> You're just going to paint them. I will, however, wear a King's Guard shirt. Yay. Yay! Excellent. Okay, so uh, these are all, we're going to take a look at um, some photos from the Ooh. Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. That looks fun. It does look fun, doesn't it? It's very like Haunted House meets Howl's Moving Castle. Like, what's his name? Vincent Price should be there in the shadows. Like, I'm, I'm sure he is. Ready to DM <laughs> your adventure. If, I think if you look at that, uh, the, the window on the right, on the tower part, uh -huh. on, the, on the top there, uh, that's Vincent Price waving. That's him. That's him yeah. just waving. But uh, yeah, Ancient Spice Miniatures uh, <laughs> painted this up, and uh, those are some blue lights inside, that's so giving it that spooky really... glow. I love uh, whenever people do uh, light up things on minis. Yeah, I think it's fun. I, think I, I wouldn't know how to do it, but I'm I'm sort of fifty fifty on it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people do it really well and it's appropriate, like light f inside a building mm -hmm. sort of spilling out. In this case, spooky blue light um, looking very cool. There are other times when it's, I think it doesn't quite match. But that's just me. But no, looking good, Ancient Spice Miniatures, very oh nice. My. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I can see it. I don't have to like go back and forth. I yeah. can. Very cool. <laughs> so James Meeks, uh, so this, I think, this is a, um, a Space Wolf Dreadnought from uh, Warhammer mm. 40,000. Um, so there's a, a Space Marine has died, mm -hmm. and so that well, almost completely died. He's not <laughs> not not all the way dead, um, but mostly he, dead. Mostly dead. Isn't going to live very long. So they get put into a sarcophagus hmm. that gets placed in the middle of these um, dreadnoughts. Okay. So when they need to go to war, they take the sarcophagus out, they, they wake them up, basically. Plug them into the dreadnought, the dreadnought goes and fight. After battle, they take it out and they put them back into, like, um, stasis. Can you imagine that being your job? To wake up the... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me! <laughs> you do it from a long way away with a long pole. <laughs> with a stick. Yep. But, uh, the, that's a dreadnought, but uh, the painting that James has done on this, however, is looking very cool. Um, and the space wolves are um, definitely associated with like winter and cold mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So the snow on the base um, just adds an extra, extra cool touch. But yeah, nice work, James. Uh, Andrew mm -hmm. has um, oh, cool. I mentioned Caradron Overlords before. Yeah. The steampunk uh, dwarves from uh, Age of Sigma. That's what these are. So they're looking very cool. Quite nice there. I might have to steal some of those ideas. But mm -hmm. I love the um, the metallics, the brassy mm -hmm. kind of look. Um, those, uh, the globes are filled with a, like a lighter than air, ether gas. Um, so they float around. 
and repair ships and fight things. Mm. But yeah, looking very nice, Andrew. Good work. Joel Coronado. It's a Reaper mini. I'm loving the look of the sword. That's, I like the way the light hits it with the, the painted highlights on like the middle of the blade there. Yep, yep. Very, really, very smooth. Really nice job. And, the, um, and those yellows. Yellows look, looking quite vibrant. They're still very warm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, nice work, Joel. Looking good. Oh. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so Clive Mills was putting this mini together. Uh, this actually brought up a couple of uh, interesting points when mm -hmm. I, I got in on this conversation. Clive um, was, he knew that when he stuck the, the arm, the lower arm onto mm -hmm. the upper arm at the joint that he was going to end up with a little gap that he was going to fill with some green stuff. So instead, um, instead of using glue and then putting, putting the green stuff around, um, he got a ball of green stuff, put it in there first and then pushed it together. And because the green stuff was sticky, because he just mixed it, yeah. it's, it stuck the two together. Um, and he was like, has anybody else done that? And quite a few people, in, myself included, were like, we have, but for something that's like that heavy sort of metal thing, mm -hmm. you really should go back and pin it. So get a little pin vice drill, drill hole into one, both sides, use a paper clip or a brass rod or something like that to um, make sure you strengthen it, yeah. that join. But uh, yeah, it, definitely doing that for, for joints that don't need to be as strong or other parts like that, it, it can make it really quick just to jam it into the green stuff, clean up the green stuff around the edges and let it dry and you're good to go. Huh. But yeah, looking forward to seeing this guy painted up. Oh, Michael's been painting uh, some Clegane. Um, there's a house Clegane. These are the mountains men from Song of Ice and Fire, uh, which is why they've got the uh, they've got the yellows rather than the reds because they're House Clegane. Hufflepuffs. Hufflepuffs. Yeah, I, I would definitely not tell the mountain that he was a Hufflepuff. Are you, I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm a Hufflepuff too, but I wouldn't tell him that he's a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he'd like to be a Hufflepuff. I have a feeling that there's uh, nothing wrong with being a Hufflepuff. I, I'm, Hufflepuff tough, I don't think Dave. there is. But other people do. No, you've I just... Seen, you've seen that video. Yeah. I'm a Hufflepuff. Oh. <laughs> anyway, no, they're looking, looking great. And the, again, the, that bright yellow was uh, really nice and, and strong. And the, I think the leather, the quilting underneath the armor, you can see that on the upper arms there. Mm -hmm. Looking very nice. Good work, Michael. Sorry. Good one. Uh, do, 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 do. We need elevator music. Ooh, that's fun. Yep. Very cool. Delightfully gory. I think my comment when uh, Frankie posted this up, I said, uh, looking really cool. And it, you can see the evidence of the total party kill. <laughs> 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 All over that. that. I mean, that would have to be a big party, too, for that much blood. There's a lot of it, yeah, isn't there? That's, yeah. Looks like he's been feasting. The dragon has gone elbows deep in several, uh, several players. <laughs> But I love that it also, like, that uh, Frankie didn't forget the tail either. So the tails got that. Because that would be sweeping around and oh, yeah. taking, people, taking heads off. But, yeah, no, looking, looking great. I like the, the dry brushing on the uh, wings. Okay, yeah. Um, Thomas Wynn. So I think, um, I'm trying to remember if we showed it. Yeah, we showed it last week. Thomas did um, Mindless. Mm -hmm. So he did a um, skeleton with the skull smashed. So you can see they yeah. didn't have a brain in it. So this one was for the prompt um, freeze. So the freeze prompt from Inktober. Um, it's definitely freezing. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So again, this is a, another Space Wolf from uh, Warhammer 40,000. Same as the mm -hmm. Dreadnought that we saw before. But uh, yeah, looking good, Thomas. Very nice. Again, bright yellow. Everyone's busting out the bright like yellows. The blue. <gasps> and Dwight's oh, got hey. bright yellow as well. <laughs> But oh, yeah, this is a Keeper of Secrets from uh, King's Workshop. So either Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40,000. It's but delightfully colorful. It is, isn't it? Yep. Looks very cool. Don't know. And there are a lot of colors going on mm -hmm. there. But 
the, they're not competing. They're not competing. Yeah, the the pinks, the purples, the blues, and um, are, are all working together. And then the the flesh tone and the the yellow mm -hmm. are working together. So I think it's nice. It's got that well, it's got that orange blue kind of. Yeah, it has the, the little it, bit of contrast uh, where they'd be on the color wheel. And I th yep. I feel like having the more um, cooler deeper colors so having the the pink and the purple yep. um, on the inside and down near the feet draws your eye back up towards yeah. the length of the mini it definitely definitely keeps you around the face mm -hmm. yeah no great work Dwight excellent choices nice painting very cool it's so little <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ludo oh dragon familiar I love that yeah. I want that. Of course you do. I want a little <laughs> finger dragon. <laughs> dragon. I have yep. bite my enemies. Just <laughs> yep. 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 Well, I wonder, like, if, was that? It would be bigger in. Well, in, in real scale. life, it'd be like my dog size, and right. I already have a, a, a dragon equivalent of right. of Marley moments, as they, we call them with my dog. I don't. <laughs> but, but finger sized dragons. Completely different. Yep. Yeah. It'd be great, but no, looks uh, looks fantastic. I love that, um, yeah, that fade you've got in the in the wings looks really great. Nice work, Dave. Excellent. A pseudo dragon, my bad. <laughs> Don't let it know that. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, Chris has been doing nice uh, nice work on these reaper bones. I like how the green is done. It very much looks like uh, he's flushed. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's got that. Um, they're working from that reddish brown yeah. up through the to the saturated greens, looking really. Yeah. It's doing a doing a great job of getting that. There's an extra depth to it. Yeah. Extra sense of depth. Looks great. And that shield with all the hands <laughs> into it. Nice one. But no, looking great, Chris. Nice work. Chris Hood, a uh, Reaper female monk. Ooh, Inktober Challenge speed paint. <gasps> Excellent. I don't know no. which which challenge which it was. I, I don't which know which prompt. prompt. I don't have them memorized. No. I'll confess. I don't. No. <laughs> we, <laughs> we had to go look it up this morning. <laughs> you could be like, this is from Inktober, and I'd be like, mm -hmm. sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. But, uh, uh, it looks nice, though. I like the base work. Yep. She looks ready to go. Like that, there's tension. Yeah, and I it, I like the again the choice of the sort of that uh, that's an auburn hair mm -hmm. with the blue. Yeah. The blue trim on the the cloaks there or the cloaks robes. Um, yeah, good choices there, Chris. Very nice. Oh my goodness. Ooh, that's, that's fun. crazy. So, a 3D printed Umber Hulk. Wow. Amazing. I'm, I like the pinchers. I'm worried about who has come along and like painted graffiti on the Umber Hulk. <laughs> was, was it sleeping? Was it chained when this was done? That has to be the ultimate drunk party, hold my beer sure. kind of like yeah. moment. <laughs> Give me that paint. I'm gonna paint that Umber Hulk. <laughs> Bet you guys won't dare me to do that. No, no one's daring you. <laughs> no one. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> But uh, no, that looks fantastic. Yep, I think, uh, yeah, excellent choices there. No worries, you're good. Okay, now painting the soil, uh, rocks and glass, uh, grass is actually, ooh. It's actually not too Oh, bad. okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, the um, final stages of, of a miniature, mm -hmm. like putting, putting the basing down or finishing painting the basing gluing on some tufts, that kind of thing, can be really super satisfying. So they finally I feel like it comes all got together. There. Yeah. Yep. I mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. A friend of mine, Ty, said that painting the edge, of the, like the rim of the base, mm -hmm. is the final thing that you do, and it's called the victory lap. I like that. That's Once cute. Once you've done it, you are the winner. But uh, looking great, Jason. Very nice. Now it's mini painting. Ooh. Oh, excellent. Oh, Paladin from WizKids. I like the magical swords. 
I do like the magical swords. I actually, I really love the braid because right. it adds such yep. motion and then having the red and the swords and then the red and the blade, like I feel like it all just kind of. It does, it does connect, it connects it all together. So it's, it helps you, I, th I think from whichever angle you'd look at, mm -hmm. at that from because those points are all up around the face. Yeah. It's gonna keep your, keep your attention in that area. Like I'm looking at the swords, I'm looking at the hair. I feel like between my looking at the swords and looking at the hair, I'm gonna get whacked in the face with the sword. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> or a quick flick of the head. Oh uh, yeah, headbutt. That's it. No, no. Oh no. So, oh, you bring the hair around. Bring the oh, hair around. True. But yeah, yeah nice, nice work. Looking good. Okay, uh, Jeff is painting the uh, Rashna, the Outcast from Hate. Hate. Um, Say that one more time. Hate. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was. Uh, <laughs> Talking with uh, Robert Sakaluk, who um, paints a lot, of, uh, posts a lot of stuff in the group, uh, was suggesting uh, he was. He said, "Oh, it's funny that I'm talking to you now. I'm just rewatching a whole bunch of episodes." And he said, "Do me a favor, never again yell paint harder." <laughs> so we know exactly which episode he was watching. So I won't um. just just for Robert. I won't yell it again. But uh, yeah, back to uh, Jeff's mini. Jeff's mini. Uh, it's looking fantastic. I'm really. Really excited by the that sort of brassy gold look that you've got going on there, and those uh, and those blades as well. Look wicked. Nice work, Jeff. Do you want to look at more or paint? Um, how many more do we have? Ten. Um, we, we can come back to them. We'll come back to them. Yeah. yeah, we'll break we'll it up. We'll painting. break it up. We got yep. some time. My what guy's been drying. Like? He looks a little more matte now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Well, you were using a color called glistening blood. I was using glistening <laughs> blood, but only because crimson w just wasn't showing. Wasn't up showing up. Yep. At all. But now I know the secret. Now, yeah. Now I know. I'm. I'm always Definitely. gonna remember that because I'm gonna associate it with this little Lan Lannister, Lannister guy. Lannister. Yep. I'm like, oh. He's Lannister. Actually, I'm gonna steal this guy. Is that steal cool? Him. Yeah, steal him. Go. Oh. Go forth. Go forth and steal. Just so I've got three different guys on the go. <laughs> that Dreadnought's description was the nerdiest thing I have heard this week. Outstanding. Yes. <laughs> what can I say, Kat? Mm. I'm a nerd. Nerd. We're all nerds here. It's I'm fine. sure that was that was geeky. I think. Geeky. That was, that was nerdy. The geeky, geeky yeah, thing. I feel. I've told you. I, I've told you my classifications, haven't I? Uh, what's your classifications? Uh, so a nerd mm -hmm. is awkwardly intelligent. Okay. A geek is awkwardly knowledgeable. Okay. And a dork is just awkward. <laughs> I have been all of these things. I feel like I feel like I waver in between them. I feel like I, I do a good job faking it till I make it though. Right. Like I have people who are like, "You're not awkward," and I'm like. <laughs> You've not been around me long <laughs> enough for my fairy glamour right. to, <laughs> to dispel. For you to be able to see, see beyond the fairy glamour, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. It's great, yeah. though, because I have the people at Starbucks thinking I'm two different people. Because they'll see me, I'll, I'll drop in for coffee before I come here when I'm yeah. dressed up, and that's apparently one person. Right. And then I've rolled up in a, in a onesie. Like gremlin <laughs> style hair, bedhead, just like I need coffee to go about my day because I'm out at home. Right. Completely, they thought I was a completely different person. Right? Do you have it? Like, do you have two different names? Um, they did not know what to call me. They were just right. like, "Hey, person." Uh, whereas normally they know who I am and they know my order by heart because All I'm right. a coffee addict, <laughs> which I am. I feel like I should have more concerns about being that. Addicted to caffeine, but I don't. But that the Starbucks baristas know you? Yeah. Nah, that's okay. I, we talk about my day, it's great. Sure. I walk in, I instantly, it's actually gotten to the point of where they, they know my order so well, I've ordered something else and I've gotten a free coffee out of it because they've already made my drink. Right. And they're like, here's your normal, and I'm like, oh, I was gonna get a pumpkin spice today. Yep. Switch it up. Nice. <laughs> um, because, you know, it's just what you do. That's cool. All right. So now... I've never had that for, for coffee. Never? Not for coffee. It's great because they know me really well by then, and then there have been days where 
I've looked tired, and I don't know whether to take this. I like I don't think too hard on it, but now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, but no, there have been days it. where I like walk in, and they're like, "You look really tired today," and they'll upgrade my drink for free. Nice. Um, which now I'm like, oh man. Was I looking rough? <laughs> That's bad. That's bad when you're so tired. The Starbucks barista is like, "You look like you had a weekend." Right. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make this drink a little bit stronger for you. That's that used funny. to happen in college sometimes too. Right. I would. Uh, they knew. Uh, uh, same theme. They all knew me because I would get a cup of coffee for every college class. Yeah. Um. Which, don't do the math on what your standard day of college <laughs> classes are and how caffeinated I was. You will be sad. Um, but, yeah, there is one day I just remember walking in and the woman being like, I'm adding extra shots of espresso, don't ask how many. And just <laughs> oh, wow. handed me. It was enough. That's kind of dangerous. It was nice. I guess it's got to get to They know point. me by now. I, it's like, I mean, it's, it's they know get... what I can handle. I trust them. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get to a point where like, if you go in in the morning and somebody does that and you get like three shots and then you go back like two hours later and you get another three shots and then somebody in the afternoon who wasn't on the morning shift goes, oh honey, here you go. It's almost like you, you, should, you should go in and say, hi, I'm, I've had seven shots today. I've had eight shots today. I... Uh, you know what I mean? Well, okay. It's, it's so kind of like uh, like you got to tell your doctor what your what other med medications you're taking, <laughs> so they don't mix. In college, though, I was self medicating for the ADHD, right? Oh, okay, right now. So in order to help me focus, I would get a cup of coffee because caffeine helps right. the focus. Um, unfortunately, it also creates a horrible caffeine addiction. Sure. So I was up to six <laughs> cups of coffee a day, right? One for each class. Um, and then when I got out of college, I was like maybe. Maybe I should cut back because I think I'm vibrating into <laughs> the next the timeline. Next plane. Yeah, I, there's <laughs> into the Spider Verse hadn't yet been invented, and yet I was let there. I was living right. it. Um, so I cut back to no coffee after noon. Right. And then that wouldn't work because I'd get headaches. So now it's just like if I can keep it to like. Two, two uh, coffees a day. Right. Whether it's in a cup or uh, a mug, then I'm good. All right. I'm good. Bye. That sounds good. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Shout out to Previews World. Mm -hmm. Yay, Previews World. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. Right. Yeah. So that's this is basically like one or two quick coats of uh, that mix of red. So I've gone with the, the burnt red from Vallejo and the uh, bloody red from Vallejo to get that bloody, <laughs> bloody red. <laughs> bloody hell, Leona. No need to make fun of my accent. Oh, Lord. <laughs> my wife was at a, uh, a work function yesterday uh, yesterday, day before, and she was talking to somebody, and she was like, "I'm, whereabouts are you from originally? Are you from, um, from New Zealand or from South Africa?" And she goes, "Why? Where do you think I'm from?" She goes, "Well, your accent sounds a, a bit English and a bit Australian, which is why it makes me think that you're from these are two places." And she explained that she was married to me. <laughs> and, I, and that was it. That was that the was whole it. explanation. <laughs> it all went from there. But no, um, we've talked about that, and I said that the, the important thing, the, the easiest way to tell the difference is to ask somebody to say fish. And their response is going to tell you where they're, where they're from. So if they're from New Zealand, it's going to be fosh. Fosh. And if they're from um, South Africa, it's going to be fish. 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 There we go. Fish. Took me a little bit. Um, but she, she was like, so I know that there's a word I'm supposed to ask you to say, but I can't remember what that word is. And even if I could remember it, I didn't, can't remember which one it is. That's <laughs> and and the, the one said, well, actually, I'm, I'm not from either South Africa or New Zealand. She was from England and she spent a lot of time in Australia. So my wife had picked it exactly. But she was getting a little bit too, uh, 
too involved. <laughs> I, I've had, since moving up from Louisiana and having my accent mush into whatever Marylanders kind of have, um, I guess. This accent. Not Baltimore. My accent. Yeah. My accent. Um, I've had people ask me so many, because apparently some of my words that I say still have an accent and some of them don't. And if I get drunk, I really do. Sure. And... Um, it's always really funny to me whenever people, because I've gotten really weird things before. I've had someone ask me if I was Australian before. And I was like, what part of my, my words? That person was like, obviously a fool. <laughs> May have been Australian. Um, I was like, that's, I, I don't understand this. And they're like, I think a lot of it is they can just tell that it's not like Maryland not entirely. Yeah. Sure. So they're like, who knows? Are you French? Are you English? Are you? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're. Let's, okay. Let's not get too exotic. Yeah. Let's stay in the lower forty-eight. Well, there's there's only like one Southern a accent people think of, uh, which is like Alabama, Tennessee kind of accent. Instead of like, there's a bunch of different Southern I know, accents. I know. Yep. So it, it just confuses them. They're like, this is not the Southern I was thinking of. And I'm There's like, like uh -huh. Creole, which is really difficult to understand, right? Sure. Is it Creole or is it Cajun? Uh, Cajun and Creole are like, um, they're, they used to be two separate like things, but now they're pretty much oh, intermingled. Oh, together, okay. Yeah. Um, Cajun is difficult to understand people who speak Cajun in English, not even just Cajun French, because they talk really quick and they have an accent that's not the southern accent you're thinking of. Um, and then they'll swap words around. Um, right. So most people with a southern accent talk in a, a, like a drawl. Right. And it's like slow. Uh, Cajuns talk really fast. Really fast. To the point yep. where I had, uh, my brother, no one understood whatsoever. Okay. Like he would get, they, even the other Cajuns would make fun of him for talking fast. <laughs> They're like, oh boy, you talk fast. Slow down. Uh, and then I did speech therapy whenever I came up from Louisiana. So if right. you're like, where's Gretchen's accent? Uh, just know that it was teased out of me literally by all my classmates. Right. Um, <laughs> but you can look up clips of people, because even people like Cajuns versus people in New Orleans, right? they sound different. Yeah. It's fun. For sure. Um, How about in Australia? Um, yeah, there are essentially two different accents, uh, and really, it's it's more about it's not even really accent; it's just the sp the pace, the cadence. So there's um, I always say that there's a city accent and a country accent. That sounds legit, though. Like I feel yeah. like everywhere has that. Yeah. So uh, mine would be a city accent. City slicker. City slicker. Um, growing Coming up in the town. suburbs as I did, uh, but <laughs> yeah, otherwise somebody would say it would sound a lot like me, just slowed down. That's fair. Because they're less rushed, more relaxed. Yeah, I don't particularly sound like anything anymore other than southern people are like, not, no, no yes, but no, and then northern people are like, also no. <laughs> <laughs> also no. <laughs> Um, everyone's like, this is wrong. Christian's um, without a home. I am. Um, I'm too south for north and too <laughs> north for south. And my dad's family's all from the Midwest, which I never, ever, like, grew up in at all. Right. <laughs> Though I do have a tendency to go, oh. Like, you know, you bump into someone, you're like, oh. oh. Yep. That's apparently very Midwest. Okay. But um, you, you also enjoy cheese, right? I do like cheese. Is that where that's from? I have no idea. Cheese is really good. Cheese is really good, so. <laughs> Richard, too much caffeine can affect your EKG. That's fun. I've only had one of those once, but it was before my caffeine addiction. Um, they thought I was having miniature seizures, but it was just the ADHD. Oh, yeah. They're like, you need to calm your brain down. And I was like, I don't think that's going to happen like you want it to. <laughs> right. Um, Not just yet. Okay. Um, what I thought I'd do here was paint uh, paint the oh, missed a little bit. It's it's my bad eyesight. Not being able to see it. Okay, but uh, yeah. So I've just painted 
the silver, uh, so in this case it was uh, one of my favorites, Gunmetal from the Army Painter, over the black that I painted earlier. And you can see it's got a very cool, um, smooth, reflective surface. Nice. Yeah, it looks even cooler on camera. Sweet. Uh, so it, this goes back to when I was saying before, I like to paint all of my metallics over black. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm gonna do is paint some uh, silver over white and to see how that looks. But that's how it looks over black. And painting it over the white. Disgusting. Pardon? That's disgusting. <laughs> what is? Licking the brush or? No. The silver over the white. Oh, okay. Oh. I think you're maybe referring to uh, Gary's comment about Dr. Pepper. No. <laughs> I don't drink fizzy drinks. No. Nope. nope. I don't like fizzy drinks at all. I don't like the texture. It's not a health kick. Everyone's like, you're so healthy. I'm like, no. No, not I at all. I just don't like fizzy. <laughs> I don't like the bubbles. They tickle my nose. I don't like the bubbles. I don't, I don't enjoy bubbly things. I enjoy the sodas. You enjoy the sodas? Yep. My lack of whimsy means that I'm not tickled by the bubbles. <laughs> There we go. I'm just trying to get all of it around the head here. I might need to paint the face just quickly before, I, so that we can get a, a reasonable comparison. This was an excellent idea before I tried it to paint the insides of the lines, and then, and then yeah. it became a not good idea, but that's all right. Oh. Isn't that just, isn't Dr. Pepper supposed to be like caramel flavored or something? Or is that Coke? Cherry. Oh. oh it's, it's, it's cherry? It's cherry flavored? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of cherry flavor. I like, like certain I, cherry flavored things. I, it depends on if they taste like medicine or not. Sure. I'm thinking of Dr. Pepper cherry. You are thinking. Yeah, I think cherry Dr. Pepper does have a cherry taste. <laughs> but not cherry Dr. Pepper. Not so much. Um, but, uh, I'll just be confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a nice cold glass of lemonade. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that doesn't look awful. Actually, I changed my mind. It's not a horrible, awful, bad idea. It probably just could have been done with better <laughs> forethought and easier. Um, oh. But I will say, Byron, jelly beans are very good. I prefer the Starburst jelly beans rather than anything else. Somehow, I don't know what happened. I went to pick out a paint, and as I pulled it back, I knocked over the water bottle, uh -huh. and the paint disappeared. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see it fly anywhere, but it's not on the table anymore. That's amazing. I have to pick a different color. <laughs> Which paint? Oh, I see it. Oh, what? How did it get? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Leona. <laughs> I don't know. Should have gone green. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There was a Leona sighting this episode. <laughs> yes. Definitely cool. Oh, what time do we have? Okay. So I'm just going to quickly paint this in. I'm going to mix in a little bit of darker brown. I'm giving this guy a yellow feather instead of a red feather. That's cool. It's a good way to uh, differentiate them on the battlefield, differentiate the, differentiate the units. So you could, for the Lannisters, Red, yellow, black, white would all be colors that would work well for that. Concentrated. 
I'm, we yeah, are. Super I've been, focused. I've been trying to make this red work. And it's, it's doing an okay job. You getting there? We're getting there. It's definitely base coat material. Cool. It could be turned, it, it holds the potential to be a well-painted mini. <laughs> awesome. Dr. Pepper is coming out with a cream soda flavor. I, anything soda pop I don't like. Cream soda is fantastic though. I'm just not about it. That's okay. But just know that everybody else is going to love it. <laughs> Maybe not everybody else, but a lot of other people. <laughs> and it sounds like okay Leona will be first in line. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Let it, let it happen. There we go. I think it's inter very, very interesting how these colors are going to look over either over black or over the the white. They are. It's it's fun to see the difference. Yeah. Again, That'd be a fun game hmm? to paint up a bunch of different minis in the same colors and have people try to guess what their base. Oh, what the prime yeah. prime coat was. <laughs> yeah, actually. Be a fun little, fun little thing. Yeah. One thing I, that I notice um, that happens quite a bit when uh, people paint almost exclusively with black primer is that because because the darker colors or the like blues and greens and browns, um, darker versions of those work well over black um, without. Uh, you can sort of get good coverage with one coat. Um, a lot of paint jobs tend to be very dark. Mm -hmm. They look look fine sort of from this distance, but when you pop them on the table, they're, ah. they don't have enough contrast in them to sort of help them pop. So it's kind of one of the, it's, it's something that it's not really, it's not particular to, um, black priming, but you see it more often, more often than not. So I think it's sometimes it's it's better for it's a good idea for people who usually use black to spray some stuff white, paint some of their stuff with switch that, switch it up, switch it up a bit, and uh, sort of same the other way. If you usually use white all the time, spray some stuff black and mess around from there. Experiment. So that's looking pretty good on camera. I don't think it's quite as neat as the camera showing it. But let me get the. So that silver, I think because there's still got a bit of white on the model, mm -hmm. the silver isn't looking. Uh, sort of silvery as it could be. It's still, actually, it's looking probably a bit more chrome so yeah. on the screen there. I'm going to paint some gold over the black here. But the, uh, I think we managed to do a fairly good job of keeping it neat, despite me being Mostly Even blind, blind, I feel like you're you're painting much more efficiently than I am. <laughs> That's just practice. That's just practice. Knowing where to put the paint. So yeah, I mean, it it really is that. It's just painting over and over and over and over again. What do they say? 10,000 hours makes you a master at something? Yep, I think the word was expert, but I'll go for master. No, just kidding. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's master because it has to do with master's degrees and why it they're does? as long as they are. Oh, right, okay. I did not know that it was connected to that. At least that's what I was told, and it made enough sense for me to not argue with it <laughs> or look it up. Cool. So. so if anybody else feels like looking it up. I won't argue with you either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's All right, do let's do it. 
more minis. Just gonna get a little bit of fun there. Okay. Brian. Ooh, that's a strong blue. It, it almost is. looks like glowy, like it's like super. Yeah, it's got a yeah, really high contrast. Again, talking about that, the contrast, you definitely wouldn't lose that on the table. Yeah. But uh, is that kind of got a, like a chain gun kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Where's that from, though? Um, did I mention that? I'm thinking it might be a privateer press model. Hmm. War Machine. The visor on the helmet giving me that kind of feel. And the fact that it's a chain gun. But no, really, I uh, like those color choices, Brian. Looking very good. It's working well against the, the helmet there, and the, as I say, the contrast is great. Very nice. Ooh. Jason says, this was the piece finally finished? Um, it's like an enormous, um, it's like a Frankenstein's monster meets zombie. That's kind of look absolutely to it. terrifying. Looks amazing. Now those look very cool. I love the the skin and the it almost like the tears. It looks like tears in the skin. But uh, uh, looking good, Jason. Very nice. Just in time for spooky season. Spooky season. Spooky. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, Michael Hanna. Ooh, that's fun. Yep, that's looking, oop. Nope, didn't have any paint on me. Uh, yeah, looking very cool there, Michael. I love the, the posing on this one. It's fantastic, just that huge beat stick ready to come down. But uh, yeah, I like the, uh, the work on the armor, the armor plates at the front. Look great, and the uh, particularly the I love the crackling. Oh, the crackling the, is on the uh, on the base. Pretty solid. Yeah, looks very nice. Great detail in there. I think Michael just joined us in the last uh, last week or so. Oh wow! Definitely cool. But no, nice work, Michael. There you go. Oh. Aww. I like oh. the vest. Yep, so this is from, uh, oh, it's from the uh, FFG Fallout board game. Isn't that crazy cool. So this is Robert that I was mentioning before who doesn't want me to yell paint harder. <laughs> you know what, I think that means you should, in fact, yell it more no. often. No, it's okay, I'm, I'm fine with it. on that. a regular basis. Yeah. I might have blown out his speakers. <laughs> he might not have been prepared for it. But, uh, yeah, this guy's looking very cool. And again, bright yellow. What's going on with the yellows? <laughs> Yellows are just a fun color. They are. Ooh. Very nice. That is Enrique. so gross looking. I love it. <laughs> I don't think, so yeah, there's, there's a one bit up the top there. You can see the, the skulls yeah. kind of oozing out of the skin. And there's another one down on the bottom left. But this is I think you've hit peak medical malady when you're oozing someone else's skull. Someone else's skulls are oozing out of your body. Yes. <laughs> yep. I mean, I'm ignoring all of the other obvious medical, <laughs> medical <laughs> issues. Right. <laughs> yes, like, yes, you are. You can tell I'd make an excellent medic. <laughs> <laughs> you're everything. Just, you're triaging. <laughs> you're triaging. <laughs> What's the biggest problem here? The skulls. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's looking looking fantastic. And I'm I really like the on the tail. Mm -hmm. That's up at the top there. Um, I think it's a tail or a tentacle or something. Um, looks like it's got nails driven through it. Yeah. But uh, the way that you work that back into the, the orange, that sort of dark greenish black into the orange, oh. looks really cool. Very nice work. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Wait one second. <laughs> one second. Okay. Ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> We'll come back. John Wick! Woohoo! <laughs> Is that like a Sleeping Beauty? It's a Sleeping left? Beauty and a John Wick. Why would you not have those together? I, you know what? I, that's a good 
good I, question. Good movie. Let's go. Oh, do you want to put them together in a movie? <laughs> I was thinking, just thinking on the same <laughs> shelf. Like, well, it's, it's John Wick's sure. what? John Wick's head? Yeah, John Wick's head. Yeah, it's not the rest of them. No. But uh, yeah. Josh is working on the rest of them. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 it hasn't, it hasn't just <laughs> removed Keanu Reeves' head. No judgment. No, no. Yeah, no. But uh, no, it's looking fantastic. I, I love the... Um, the work on the sort of the translucent um, the sheerness of genus. the nightgown yep. yeah that's hard to do yeah it um, is it, uh, mm-hmm. Josh has done a great job there and yeah the John Wick model I can't remember who makes that I feel terrible because I can't remember it but uh, yeah it's obviously very very well done and I think it, the, the posing of the the model is very much a, the <laughs> the ready to go yeah can go save some up. puppy dogs uh, yeah, well, not save. He didn't save any. He just got angry about losing. <laughs> but uh, no, it looks fantastic. Some, uh, seeing this, of course, uh, reminds me that um, Josh has started a new podcast ah. called The Paint Cast, where he's going to be talking to um, painters around the, all around the country uh, who do different things. Some fun. of them are profe- professional painters, some of them not professional painters. Um, yeah, just to sort of talk about what they're doing, what they enjoy about the hobby, how they got started, um, what their favorite things are, that, that kind of stuff. And um, so, yeah, I, uh, I had a phone call with uh, Josh last Friday to record episode two. All right, so cast. you'll be on episode two. I'll be on episode two, which So we should I all go listen to drops episode tomorrow. two. But yeah, go and check out um, Mini Painting Studio, their Facebook page. I say their Facebook page. It's Josh, his Facebook page. Don't um, don't destroy the mystery. The man, the mystery, the legend. Too late. Come on. Too late. <laughs> but if you want to see some really awesome painting, go and check out Mini Painting Studio anyway. <laughs> regardless of the lack of mystery. Um, <laughs> I tried Mini uh, Painting Studio. Yeah, no worries, Josh. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely cool painting. And uh, the first episode was with uh, Shirshi Bauer. Who is um, she's a fantastic painter, does some really beautiful stuff. She started actually she before she started painting miniatures, she was a watercolor painter. Ah, see, the like a professional watercolor painter is amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna call myself a professional watercolor painter. <laughs> I, I tried to do commissions and then I you learned. I learned I hated people. That's what oh. I learned. I tried for a hot minute. I was like, I love painting. People will pay me to do what I love. And then I realized that people, people want, are the pe- worst customers. Pe- people want you to paint what they love, not what you um, love. I don't but mind yeah. doing that. Oh. Yeah. It's cool. People. Very <laughs> right, interesting. People. That's why we keep Gretchen in a studio. <laughs> Where she only has to interact with a very small number of people. I interact. Yep. Excellent. Wonderly. Wonderfully. Wonderfully. With the words and the things. It's Remember like how a, I said that like awkward bit at like 80%? That's my cat. Fantastic. Anyways. So, Steve, we have the, the complete minis. This is looking fantastic. Uh, it looks really cool. So, obviously, uh, all the, the parts on the the left ready to be assembled. Um, I wonder if, so I'm guessing this might be 3D printed. He's printed all those separate pieces and uh, is, yeah. is assembling. Cool. But yeah, I'm loving the um, like the deep reds and the, the tan bone kind of look. Um, looks very vicious. Nasty. 10 out of 10 would fight again. <laughs> no, looks great, Steve. Nice work. Oh, hey! Woohoo! It's horrified. nice to see these actually painted. Yep. Last so, time I saw these, they weren't. Because you played in a. I did. Played I played. It, played um, we did a playthrough, and we did a playthrough in um, this really cool pizza shop that was themed like all the different iconic movies. Okay. Together, it was amazing. Like, like the horror movies. It was like the horror movies, and yep. Leona can vouch the garlic bread. Yep. Oh man. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> the game was really fun too, but that garlic uh, bread though. Uh, yep. <laughs> On the 31st, I get to paint them? We're going to paint some of these? Yes! Yep. Fa- 
we're gonna get spooky because Fantastic. the thirty first falls on a Thursday. That's awesome. We have. So what are we got? Really. Is it's that the all Invisible the iconic, Man? It's the Invisible Man, Dracula, Dracula. Frankenstein's monster, the creature from the lagoon, um, the Bride Very of Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Uh, Wolfman, Wolf and then the Mummy. The Mummy. Is that the Mummy or was it Dengar from Star Wars? Uh, yeah. The uh, Bounty Hunter. <laughs> I can never tell. <laughs> but anyway, uh, looking fantastic. I love the, uh, the bright, vibrant colors. Good choices. And it matches up with the game, too, because the game's super vibrant and fun yeah. and just very everything iconic. I, I gotta say, I, I'd be tempted to paint them all in um, black and white. Oh. Which would be pretty crazy. But anyway, uh, Chuck Luzia. Oh, second oh, mini fun. ever painted. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad you're showing it. Yeah, that's super cool. That's really good. For a second mini ever painted, you're going to... Doing yep. better than probably my first mini ever painted. <laughs> <laughs> Looking great. No, I think um, the again uh, going back to the neatness mm -hmm. being that key. Um, Chuck's done a great job of keeping everything nice and neat, um, which is really good. I think when when starting out, sometimes it it can feel it might feel a little bit like color by numbers. I get that sometimes. Yep. Which really, when it comes down to it, is it, that what it, we're doing? It, it is. It can be, but it's rather than you, you get to choose which numbers, uh, which colors <laughs> are connected to which. I numbers. get to choose the numbers. I get to choose the colors. Fifty-three <laughs> purple. <laughs> Hooray! Bingo. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so you get to choose the colors. Oh, not, hey, Rick. Not the numbers. Nice to but, see uh, you joining us. Woohoo! Hey, Rick. And also, the garlic bread was way better than maple syrup. But God, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. But, uh, but no, Chuck, doing a great job there. Oh, and Fabrice is back with the dragon again. But uh, yeah, this time he's worked, finished the base. But it's looking, uh, looking fantastic. It's been a, been a real treat to watch this uh, sort of go through the stages. It's always and, fun uh, seeing something just bloom. Yep, yeah. yeah, exactly. I feel like that's a good term for that. Well, I think um, seeing the like I'm pretty sure it's a it's like green grass on the base there. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing yeah that pop up um, next to the red of just, the dragon. It's good. It's really it's good. Just colorful. Yep. I like that uh, that sort of connection. And of course the gold on the the base, the all the gold coins is working well against the um, the wings. It's got a lot of purple in the wings, so looking good. Very nice for Reese. Awesome. Yay. So, back to this. Back to this guy. Where can I go hmm? to post my own minis, Dave? Oh, that's a great question. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> Leona just asked, Dave, where do I go to post my own photos of my own minis? Um, so that, that means that Leona is going to be pace, posting some photos of her minis soon because she is already a member of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. It backfired, Leona. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, head along to Facebook, go to the uh, Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, uh, hit join group, and uh, one of us will let you in through the gate. Oh. That sounds fancy. It's it's not really. Every just time someone click. clicks that, I just imagine now it's just you sitting there going, "Open the gate!" Open the gate! It's like the gates of Mordor. <laughs> yeah. See, what you didn't Thank know you. I'm is glad, when I'm glad somebody liked it. When you sign up to be part of Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook page, you instantly become an orc, <laughs> a little painter orc. <laughs> well, it's true. But uh, yes. Anyway, come along and join us. Um, it's there's no gate. It's just a button that says approve. Uh, but yes, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you uh, showing your minis, uh, talking about your painting, uh, asking questions, um, providing answers, helping folks out. That's what we're, we're doing. Having a good just time. Having a good time. Sharing a meme or two sometimes. Occasionally a meme. It's a painting uh, meme. Painting related memes for sure. Uh, but yeah, the, not just memes. <laughs> not just memes. Not just random memes. But uh, yeah, the idea is definitely to to have fun, to learn, to pass on your knowledge, all that kind of stuff. 
So. All right. Uh, that now I'm gonna add some metallics and. I'm going to talk about these two guys. Talk about those two guys. These two guys. So, hang on a second. Where did I put the gold? <laughs> I lost that too. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the... There it is. I put it back. So, hang on. I've got... If you'd like to use those two. Oh. Yeah, that so, works. So, here we go. Up close. There we go. So, here we go. We can see that... Um, so, that's the gold painted over the white, and I'm just, of course, looking at it up close on a big screen, and notice that underneath here, you can see where there's white showing through. I know. Hang on a sec. That means you have to go back and correct it. So I'm going to go back and think that I've corrected it, but in reality, I won't have. So I tried to correct it a little bit with uh, some gold. But it's still still there. What I'm going to do is just get a little bit of the, the dark red and paint that into that section there. So we've got that. It's looking fairly bright, highly polished. And this is that same gold over black. And here I get to see where I didn't quite take it to the edge, and that black is showing through. So if I can just sort of run around there. Hmm? What's that? Yeah. Well, this is one of, the, one of those things where the black, having the black under it, means you don't have to worry really about um, those edges. Well, you can sort of worry about them, but you don't have to worry about them as much. And the, I always feel that the, the um, metallics are a lot, have a lot more depth to them. I feel like metallics are also just more forgiving. Uh, they can be, yeah. They're definitely. Um, I hide everything I do wrong with metallics. Metallics, <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, they're, because they're, they're flakes mm -hmm. um, of pigment in the metallics are larger, mm -hmm. um, and they're, um, they're not. Each flake itself isn't really translucent, so they have a, a much better opacity than almost any other paint. But uh, yeah, the silver's looking good there. I think reflecting quite well, and just the silver's looking a little bit too bright here, for my liking. Maybe he's new. He might be. That's our yeah. rookie. Don't right. be mean to our rookie. Okay, I'll try not to be mean to him. Uh, so what I might do, so that we can bring the two of these together side by side as a reasonable comparison, is go along and paint everything else black so that it matches the same as, as this guy. And then we can put them on the spinner and compare. Yeah. So I'll get in there and do that. Okay. Oh, we've still got pattern to do. How much time have we got? Oh, we got to <gasps> do a pattern? Okay. Okay, I can, do, I can slap on some... Some kind of pattern. Some kind of pattern. <laughs> it might be polka dots, but hey, That's still this is our fashionable Lannister. Yep. There we go. So, what do you have coming up this weekend? Uh, so, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go to the National Apple Harvest Festival. Oh, cool! And I am going to pet a baby goat and drink some hard cider. And enjoy my fall. Are you going to eat some apple, apple fritters? Yeah. Excellent. I think that's my, my favorite thing to do with apples. Right. Turn them into apple fritters. I like apples in general. I, I'm not actually much of a cider fan. Okay. Um, like I like hard cider, but like yep. just in general, apple cider is a little too much like apple juice for me. Right, okay. And I'm not really a fan of apple juice. Sure. Um, but... I personally, I know everyone's like apple cider versus pumpkin spice. No. I am hardcore a chocolate and mint <laughs> person. <Right. laughs> 
<laughs> Leona realizes the kind of person I've been all along. Um, no, that's the best one. Peppermint's the best. Oh, so I never get it. I'm like, y'all can, y'all can definitely do that. I will. I enjoy those flavors, but I am. Oh, I love mint. Andy's mints. I could eat a whole pack of Andy's mints. If, if Andy lets you. <laughs> Good dad joke. Good dad, dad joke. Ten out of ten. Excellent. Excellent. Speaking of dad, I'm gonna, this Saturday I'm taking my eldest daughter Emily to her first um, robotics competition. Ooh. Yeah. That's fun. Her school has a um, robotics team, uh, which she joined for the first time this year. And I think on, uh, when was it, Monday evening and yesterday, no, today, this afternoon, for their, um, sort of their final practice before the So what happens at a robotics competition? See, I was really hoping that it was going to be like battle bots. That's the only thing I can think of, and that's, I was hoping too. I was going to be like, let's... I hope your daughter's robot destroys all others that come in its path. Yeah, I, I mentioned that to the to the guy that runs the robotics club, and he let me know that it's not actually that way. That's disappointing. So when they're working, it's uh, they they work in. Um, so you've got they have a team uh, from each from the schools that are competing, yeah. and it's uh, it might be like my daughter's school and another school, they work as a team to uh, against two other teams. Okay. But again, it's not, they don't have robots that fight, which is That's really disappointing. Why are we so doing I, this if our robots I don't know, can't fight? It, it appears to be pointless. But, um, <laughs> but no, they, they have to perform tasks, they have to move items around with the robots. So it's, it's more sort of real world application kind of stuff. Battling bots is real world application. It will be one day, perhaps sooner than we think. But um, yeah, but otherwise, no. So it's going to be that. So I'm going to take it to that on uh, on Saturday. And um, man, that's like the most disappointing thing I've learned about life all today. I got to tell you, I'm I'm the still the robot club doesn't fight robots. I'm still pretty excited about it. Oh, it still sounds fun. Yeah, I'm really excited to see a however misleading on a team. Yes, however misleading it is. I was I was certain it was some kind of battle bots kind of thing, but no. Maybe that's what they do at the end of the year, like at the. I would sort of if I was the end teacher. Of club party. If I was the teacher in charge of that club at the end of the year, I would most definitely be like, <laughs> and now it is time for the grand finale of everything. Yeah. And fight. Go forth and conquer. I think that would be exciting. Okay, we're almost done. I don't have a pattern. Well, you better change that quickly. I thought it was more important to show this uh, base coding aspect. It is. I see Leona agrees with me, her chuckling. But uh, yeah, so that should be fun. And, ooh. That's the other thing. We might, on, on Sunday, I'm not 100% sure, but I think we might be heading to uh, see Natasha in her um, roller derby. Oh, roller the derby. roller derby. Yeah. That's really fun. I've, I've watched uh, Natasha in her roller derby. I've helped out with their halftime shows. We've done swords events for them. Oh, cool. And they are really, really fantastic and fun to watch. And... It's nice because unlike a lot of other like events, these people want you to hoot and holler. Right. Yep. Um, and like really get involved in cheering, which I think is super fun and fantastic. That is cool. Yeah. We went to, went to some roller derby a couple of years ago, but I think the girls were a little bit too young to to appreciate to the... appreciate it. <laughs> but I think they're at the point now where they they definitely appreciate it. So we might do that on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I think on Sunday, uh, my boyfriend and I are actually signed up for a train like a night event. 
Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do it or not, if there's any spaces left, because it was a last minute kind of, if there are spaces left, we'll go thing. Right. After we spend, you know, a day at the Harvest Festival. Right. And then, um, but yeah, it's apparently some kind of, I don't even know really what it is entirely. <laughs> apparently some um, kind of. Some kind of like training, um, training like a knight, whatever that means. So. Is that where you get winched onto horses because your armor is so heavy? That's a falsity, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll find out. And it's supposed to be a workout, so that'll be fun. Right. Um, but before we get too t towards the end, someone, Janitoro, said, how about that new Reaper Kickstarter, eh? <gasps> oh, yeah, actually, speaking of that, um, I think Josh was on the, Josh from Mini Painting Studio was on the launch live stream. Ah. Sort of hanging out, yeah. He's, uh, well, since he recently moved to Texas, um, he's quite near Denton, where Reaper are based. So I think he's going to be doing a few uh, cool, fun things with them. But I'll let him talk about that in, in his own way. But uh, yeah, um, so Bones 5 launched um, last week and went, uh, went pretty crazy. All right. Oh. Here's what we have. Sorry, yep. I'm just uh, just painting the bases so that you can't can't tell which is the, which prime coat. You have to try and guess. Ah, I'm yeah. gonna. Mine, you can definitely tell because I've had the same one all along. <laughs> and it's not completely finished, but. But. I've had the most patience with this. Right. Base coating, I think I've had in a long while. <laughs> right. And it doesn't look too shabby. Definitely would be something where if I finished base coating it and then I went back and I cleaned it up and yep. then I started everything, I think it would be off to a pretty good start. And bloop. So there he oh, is. It is the, um, it's the basis for everything. Yeah. So. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. Which is which? Yep. Who's is who's? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I know which base coat is Wait, which. Look at that huge. Oh, I didn't see it before. <laughs> Curse my lack of eyesight. <laughs> I gotta take that guy. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, he looks pretty good. He's, um,. If, I really focused on having patience this go round, um, which is my downfall mostly with doing any kind of base coating is I, I slap on some colors and then I'm like, oh no, the amount of time it took me to slap on those colors. I now only have 30 minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, they look But this way, good. because it was focused, uh, yeah. our episode was like focused on base coating, you didn't have to do anything else. I did else. not have to do anything else, so I didn't have to worry. I didn't yep. have to get that hustle going. You could take your time. Yeah, so. So yeah, we've definitely got three very different reds there. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes in the Lannister military <laughs> setup, you oh, know, yeah. it's, it's just. Yeah, not all the, not everybody's <laughs> coat was dyed at exactly the same time. Yeah, right? those are some old-timey, you know, and and maybe, you know, he mixed up his laundry. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yep. Or someone was out in the sun for too long. I was going to say, yeah, this guy's obviously the, where is it? Yeah, this one here is the veteran. Yeah, he's he's been there. He's got the, the, the lightest color. The most washed. Yeah. He's, he's learned the dangers <laughs> of not washing his tunics. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, um, all right. yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Please tune in next week, uh, where I don't know what we'll be painting, but we'll be painting something. <laughs> we will. Leona will post it in the group. Ooh, Leona always keeps us updated. She does. <laughs> On, <laughs> on track is what it is, really. We know where we're going. Focus. Yep. Leona holds all the carrots. Um, <laughs> okay. Yep. Anyways, I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you at your friendly local game store.
Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.